welcome to you, dear people of God. What a wonderful promise that we have that we can go to God in prayer. And these are indeed praying times. And uh, I trust that you're encouraged at the many people that I see who are calling one another in prayer, having prayer call lines and prayer conferences on the uh, telephone. And it's a wonderful uh, opportunity to encourage one another and to encourage the people of God. I stand here once again uh, in a vacant house of worship, missing all of your dear faces, even those that go to sleep while I'm preaching. I miss you. But uh, we're praying that this will soon pass and we'll soon be able to get together again in the house of the Lord to worship him in the beauty of holiness. I believe that where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. He's right there with you, maybe by yourself, but God is still there. And our confession must be, faith says that all is well. No matter what my eyes may see, no matter what my ears may hear, all is well, for God will fight for me. These are days to hold on to your faith. Our faith is meant for times like this. The word says that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And God wants us to be overcomers. Overcomers is what he desires us to be in times of trouble. So we're going to pray and look to the Lord now for this time. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name that is above every name. Oh, God, we bless your name. We worship your name. We honor you today. We exalt you, we love you, we adore you. Even in this season, our eyes are on you. We're looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And you're there making intercession for us at times like this. Oh, Spirit of the living God, in the midst of this season, this season of coronavirus that has invaded the land, not only America, but the nations of the world, we do lift up people. We lift up doctors and nurses and first responders and every individual who has to minister to those who have contacted this virus, this disease, we ask that you give them strength, that you give them peace, give them direction, help them, oh God, give them to know that people are praying for them around the world, not only them, but those who have this sickness, who have this disease, we're lifting them up before you, almighty God. Oh, spirit of the living God, we're asking you to let your healing touch move over those bodies. Raise them up, oh God. Raise them up and bring them back with their families. We lift up the families of those who are suffering here in America and around the world, those that are sick with this disease. We give them to you. We put them in your hands, almighty God, and ask for your touch today, your wisdom, your guidance. Oh, my God, help our medical science team to indeed find the vaccine for this virus that, uh, that might help us in this hour. Now, Father, breathe upon us. Let the words from this mouth, the meditations from this heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You're our strength 
and you're our Redeemer. And we'll praise you, we'll glorify you, we'll exalt you, we'll honor you all the days of our lives. Oh, hallelujah. What a privilege to come to you in prayer, believing you, trusting you at this time. In your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We want you to be encouraged and trust that you will build up yourselves on your most holy faith. That faith that God has given to you, it's a holy faith. It's a faith. Every man has been given a measure of faith, and with that measure of faith that you have, God wants you to take and build yourself up, strengthen yourself on your most holy faith, God-given faith that he has given to you. The word says to have faith in God, not in religion, have faith in God, not in people, have faith in God, in him. In him we live, we move, and we have our being today. Oh, think back for where, from where the Lord has brought you from and what he's done in your life. And let your eyes continue to be upon him at this season, at this time of trial and affliction and testing. Let's keep our eyes on the Lord. And please know one thing, God's power has not changed, not one bit. He's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same forevermore. We serve a mighty God, almighty God. He's an omnipotent God. He's an omniscient God. He's an omnipresent God. Everywhere present at the same time. He's right there with you. He's right here with me. And we thank him for the privilege of calling on him and seeking him and looking to him. And it is with that that I believe I just want to share a scripture that I have gone to time and time again in the Old Testament and uh, there are principles within it that I believe we can put into place and practice even at this season. One scripture, two scriptures I want to give before we go to that. One is from Psalm 91. Oh, we've seen a lot of Psalm 91 that people are passing around. It's an encouraging word. Psalm 91, 15 says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Psalm 50 and 15 says, Call upon me, in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Oh, when we come through this thing, let's glorify the Lord. Not only when we come through, but right now we've got to praise him and exalt him and trust him. Praise him in the storm. Praise him in the battle. Praise him when you're going through. Praise him when the burdens are heavy. Praise him in the midst of affliction. My God, and when you come out of it, you can give him more praise. You can lift him and exalt him. Use This is a time for us to use our weapons of faith, of prayer, and praise. Yes, they are graces that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you have to use them also as a weapon because your adversary comes to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. And this virus, it, it, it's really, if you keep your eyes always on the news, you'll be discouraged. Just last week, I stood here 
and uh, had given you a figure. It was a little over 12,000, almost 13,000 people that have died around the world with this coronavirus, and now it's over 30,000. It's time to pray. It's time to call upon the Lord and ask him, Lord, you come in. You know you can see it. We can't see it, but God, you can see everything. You know everything. You know, God, where it came from. You know how it got here. You know what it's going to take to get out of here so that we can begin to live our lives the way uh, we can do to support our families and to pay our bills and have food on our table. So the Lord wants us to call unto me. I'll answer. That's what he's saying to us today. Call unto me and I'll answer. We need God to answer us. When nobody else has got any answers, God's got the answer. He knows everything. His eyes roam to and fro in the earth. He can see everything. And we bless the Lord for that. So three things I want you to look at today. Seek the Lord. Hear the Lord and praise the Lord. And the scripture comes from 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Many of you preachers have preached from it. Uh, I know I've gone back to it again and again down through the years. And every time I read it, every time I go to it and meditate in it and study it, there's always some more searching you can do through the scriptures that the Spirit will uh, reveal to you what the Word is saying to us. God's Word is going to stand forever. Listen, heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's Word is going to stand forever. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's how we're going to live, not by bread only, not by natural food, but our inner man has got to feed from the Word of God so that we can be strengthened from day to day and not allow fear to overtake us and discouragement and stress can come upon us. But we, our eyes on Him, He will give us strength in the inner man to be able to go from day to day. So if, you, if you're home today and you have your Bibles with you, go with us to the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter, just for a few minutes of meditation I'd like to give. It happened that Jehoshaphat, who was king of Judah, and he was a good king. He was the son of Asa. And during his reign, there was peace and prosperity because Jehoshaphat was a man of God's word. And more than anything, he wanted to do what God said and God honored him for that. When you do what God wants you to do, God will honor you for your faith. God will honor you for living for him, for giving your life to him. The word of God says, the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble and he knows them that trust in him. God knows that you're trusting in him. God knows that your confidence is in him. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, we know that we have the petitions that we desired from him. So from Je uh, Jehoshaphat had come into some trouble, just like we're in trouble. And the people of Moab and the people of Ammon and the Ammonites had come against Jehoshaphat to battle. And there came some that told him that there's coming against you a great multitude. And it goes on to say that Jehoshaphat 
had feared. He had done what we all do. It's natural to fear. But he didn't stop there. It says that he set himself to seek the Lord. And that's what you have to do when you fear. And we all fear at some time or another when trouble comes, when trials and afflictions come. We must acknowledge it and then seek the Lord. Why? Because God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He's given you power. He's given you love. He's given you a sound mind. And in the midst of that trouble, if you seek him, we'll see what happens that you are able to come out victoriously. And Judah had gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. My God, when we wage war in the spirit realm, we realize that our adversary is not in control. When you seek God in the midst of your trials and afflictions, you are literally releasing all of that weight and responsibility and tension and fear and stress. You're turning it over to the Lord. You're giving it to him to handle. If you carry it, my God, it may kill you. But you turn it over to the Lord Jesus Christ. They came together to ask help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and in Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he stood there and he began to pray this prayer. My God, we need to do more emphasis in the body of Christ on praying and seeking the Lord. It's good to have Bible studies and we must have them because the word says study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But also it mentions prayer. God wants us to pray. Men always ought to pray, have a spirit of prayer where we seek him. So it cannot be all Bible study and prayer down here. Neither can it be all prayer and Bible study here. We don't have the word up here from a head knowledge, but the prayer, the spirit of prayer will back up what you say. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Men ought always to pray and not to faint because many are fainting at this time and they had gathered there in prayer there at that sixth verse there at the sixth verse it says oh lord god of our fathers are you not god in heaven and do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations and in your hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land for be, before your people Israel and you gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? And they dwelt therein and have built you a sanctuary therein for your name saying, if disaster comes upon us by sword or judgment, pestilence or famine, that we could stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry unto thee in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And then he reminded God, and now, Lord, look how the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out 
of your possession which you have given to us to inherit. That's what the enemy wants to do. He's seeking to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's why we've got to pray. Pray in this land. God, we don't know where this virus comes from, but it's sent to steal from us. It's sent to kill us. It's sent to destroy us. And we're asking you, oh God, to come in and move it out of the land. We're believing, oh God, that you're able to do it, knowing that you're willing to do it, but you're looking for a people that will call upon you, call upon you in the day of trouble. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He gathered a prayer meeting. My God gathered a prayer meeting. Jehoshaphat didn't look across town to see what evangelist he could fly in and put him in the best hotel in Jerusalem and send a limousine for him to come and pray for him. He wasn't looking for no prophet. He wasn't looking for no seer. It was a time to stretch out before God. And God sends those seasons in our lives to let us know. Get your eyes off of people. Get your eyes off the high-powered evangelists. Get your eyes off of the apostles and the prophets and the pastors and the teachers that we have put on pedestals. God is saying, put me on that pedestal now. Worship me, glorify me, magnify me, exalt me, and watch me come in and do exploits in your life. Watch me come in and make a way out of no way. Oh, thank God for the evangelists. Thank God for the teachers. Thank God for those people who travel around the country preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. But there comes a time of special seasons of prayer that the Lord wants no personality there. He wants the people to seek him for himself. Oh, bless his name. Thank God for the privilege of prayer. Thank God for uh, praying people and praying churches and people who know the worth of prayer. I remember so, uh, years ago, the saints of God used to talk about Oh, the worth of prayer. People don't know uh, the worth of prayer nowadays and what it's able to do in an individual's life. Thank God for intercessors. That's what we need now. Intercessors in the body of Christ who can pray for one another. God wants us uh, to lift up one another in prayer. Lift your pastor up in prayer. Lift your leaders up in prayer. Lift one another up in prayer. Caring for one another in the body of Christ. And prayer is a weapon. Prayer is your weapon to seek the Lord. And some may function at different levels of prayer. Everybody is not on the same level when it comes to some intensive prayer sessions. I don't know about you, but uh, when we have prayer meeting here at Deliverance Church, it's never like a Sunday morning unless some trouble has hit the land, but there are intensive prayer sessions. Those intensive prayer sessions uh, where you come to spend time before the Lord, time in his presence. Sometimes we have a, a all-night prayer here at special occasions. At least we try it once a month on Friday nights, all-night prayer. Everybody can't spend all night in prayer if they are not at that level. The Word of God talks about there are fathers in the Lord. There are mothers in Zion. There are babes in Christ. And uh, if, if individuals aren't ready for more intensive times of prayer, that's all right. They have to grow into that. They have to be taught into that. It's, uh, it's I, I, I say here, those intensive prayer sessions may not be for the mini skirt wearers and the bubblegum chewers, as I, I call it. Uh, and they, they come in, they want to be on their cell phones, they want to be on 
media and uh, they want to be on social media and different things. Their minds are not geared for more intensive prayer sessions. That's why we need mothers in the church, fathers in Zion who will stretch out before Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. And that's what Jehoshaphat was doing at this season, calling upon him. Some things I believe will never happen unless we pray, a praying people. And to call upon God is the way to release our burdens to him. I guarantee you when you pray, when you seek the Lord, when you call on him, those burdens will begin to lift. That fear, that stress, that tension of whatever you're going through will begin to lift from you. So we must speak the promises of God into our circumstances. Your words will become powerful weapons that will defeat the enemy. Oh, we thank God for that. So there on as he was calling upon God and seeking the Lord, after they had sought the Lord, then in verse 13, it says, Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives and their children, they stood before the Lord in prayer. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, hearken all you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it's God's. Oh, how many times down through the years I've had to meditate on this word that every battle you find yourself in, you must release it, seek the Lord, turn it over to him, and then walk in faith and declare the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. I've turned it over to him. Every battle that you have gone in prayer about and sought the Lord about and turned it over to him, it's now his battle. And that's what we're doing here in America. Oh, I believe they're praying all around this world. They're turning this battle over to the Lord. Lord, you fight it. We can't see it. Don't know where it came from, but we're looking to you, Lord, to get it out of here. Move it on out in the name of Jesus because your name is above every name. Oh, hallelujah. His name is above sickness. His name is above disease. His name is above every name that's got a name. And we thank and praise him. And that's where prayer warriors have got to go in. Prayer warriors have got to go in and wage battle. My God, my God. Prayer warriors are those warriors who can spend time in prayer. Prayer warriors are not the crowd that's got to pray. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. That's for children. But prayer warriors get in. Oh my God. And they can pull down strongholds. And that's what we need today. We need all the people of God all across the land, all across America to come together in prayer. Doing what? We've got to lift our leaders in prayer. Many of them don't know prayer, don't, don't want anything to do with prayer, can't, can't pray in public because it's not politically correct, but you and I who know the words of Almighty God, we got to pray for them. The Lord, if they can't pray for whatever reason, don't want to pray, don't know how to pray, the saints of God 
are calling on you, mighty God, to intervene in the name of Jesus, lifting up our leaders, lifting up our president, lifting up Congress, lifting up senators, lifting up those that are over us in the government. We're giving them to you, God. You know how to handle them. You know how to deal with them. You know how to get a hold of their hearts. You know how to shake them down and bring them into your presence that they might acknowledge you and confess you. And we thank you for it. And he said, when he came in with that prophecy, and many times hearing from the Lord after we have talked to God in prayer, be quiet for a while and listen to what the Spirit might be saying to you. He might be leading you to some scripture. He might be speaking to your inner man. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he prophesied and said, listen, all you inhabitants, of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. He went on to say that the battle is not yours, but tomorrow go down against them. Ah, oh my God, they're coming up by the cliff of Ziz. And he went on to say, you shall not need to fight in this battle, but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. My God, God wants us to stand still, to believe him, to trust him, told him where the enemy was coming up. When you seek God and pray and talk to him with an honest heart, my God, the spirit of the Lord will give you wisdom and discernment just where that devil is. Oh, just where the adversary is trying to attack you and, and come at you, the Spirit of the Lord will give you wisdom. That's why we trust him. That's why we seek him. That's why we love him the way we love him. We give him our problems. We give him our cares. We give him the afflictions of life. We lay it at his feet and ask for his guidance and his direction and then we hear from God. We seek the Lord. We hear from the Lord. And then after he has given them instructions what to do, Jehoshaphat met with the singers and with those uh, that would go out into battle and singing and praising the Lord. My God, even when they got the word from the Lord and the Lord had given them instructions, the prophecy came through. The word says that uh, the children of the Kohathites and Korites stood up and began to praise the Lord with a loud voice on high. Everybody, uh, some folks get nervous when people praise God loudly. You may get nervous when you come to deliverance because we praise him here. We praise him loudly. We praise him in the dance. We praise him with our hands lifted. We praise him and give God the glory. There are times of uh, uh, shouting and there may be times when it looks like uh, the roof might come off. And then there are other times when it's quiet. But whatever times it is, whether you're kneeling, whether you're stretched out, whether it's a loud voice, whether it's a soft voice, whether it's the sign of the cross on your body, whatever it is, my God, give God the praise. Give God the glory. Give him the honor and watch him give you victory. Give you victory how, Brother Pat? Give you victory in your spirit. Give you victory in your inner man. You will have strength to fight. My God, if you seek him, if you hear from him, if you praise him, you will have strength in the battle. And praise is your weapon. Faith is your weapon. Prayer is your weapon. And those weapons take the strength out of defeat. 
when you would walk around with your head down, when you would walk around depressed, when you would walk around discouraged, when you come out of prayer, you've got your head lifted, you've got your eyes lifted up to Jesus saying, I believe everything is going to be all right and I'm going to make it, I'm going to have the victory, God's going to bring me out, God's going to bring me through it, and you can praise him for it. Seek him today. Oh, call upon him. Cry out to him. The Lord is with you. He is a present help in the time of trouble. You walk with him long enough, you'll find out this life can throw you some stuff. This life can throw you some stuff that it will cause you to run to the Lord. But he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler so thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth in noonday. For a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee uh, to keep thee in all of thy ways uh, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone uh, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet uh, because he hath set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him uh, I will set him on high because he hath known my name uh, he shall call upon me uh, and I will answer him uh, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and I'll show him my salvation. Oh, we thank God for his salvation today. His salvation that gives life. His salvation that gives healing. His salvation that brings deliverance. His salvation that brings victory. His salvation that brings joy unspeakable and full of glory in the Holy Ghost. We thank God today. Oh, I'm praying. I'm praying. You keep on praying through the land. Pray in the morning. When you can't sleep at night, get up in the midnight. Walk the floors of your home while everybody is sleeping. Stretch out your hands towards heaven and call unto me in the day of trouble. I'll answer you. Call unto God. God, call leaders out. Call your family out. Call your neighbors out. Get within your spirit what you need to rise above this thing with a smile on your face, with victory in your life, and God will bring you through it. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. God will bring you through it victoriously. So come on, let's pray and look to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Oh, we praise you for your precious word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall never pass away. We thank you and we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for the privilege of seeking you. We thank you for the privilege of hearing from you. We thank you for the privilege of praising you in the midst of trials and burdens and afflictions. We thank you, oh God, because we know that you know them that trust in you. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us.
says, your peace you gave unto us. Not as the world giveth do you give unto us. So we're going to let not our hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Oh, thank you, wonderful Savior. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand of grace. Stretch out your hand of mercy. Stretch out your hand over this land, over America, oh God. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, and we'll glorify you. We'll exalt you. We'll adore you, for we love you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Teach us how to love our neighbors as ourselves, and we'll honor you. We'll bless you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, and we thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you today. Be encouraged, people of God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Pray for one another. Serve him. Honor him. And God will bring you through it. We love you today. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. May God bless you. Till the next time.